Thank you for coming for points far away and very near to attend our first ever AMUS C Programming Conference for the Amiga. Um, we've been doing the show 15 years. This is the 15th year we've been doing it. And uh, first time ever that we've had a specific programming conference. Uh, and we're very happy to have Steve Soli here, who is our developer team lead from Hyperion Entertainment, and who has put in all this time, effort, and energy for the sake of the community. I think you all know what that means. So uh, let's give him a round of applause and everybody who's helped him. First, I'd like to make sure everybody knows where the material is for the, for the course, so to speak, the, the workshop slash seminar, whatever we want to call it. Does, so does everybody know that it's on the wiki? wiki.amigaos.net. Okay, we're good there. Now, if you go to the tutorial section, I stuck it at the bottom of that for now. Now, I might move it, but for now, that's where it's going to live. So, that's my, uh, I'll just scroll down here. It's at the bottom of the tutorials. So, you can see there's the lessons. And I listed them all, and various people filled them in as we went. It's all, uh, this is all a volunteer effort, if, if, you, uh, if you didn't know. So, none of us are being paid to show up for any. Um, and we're trying to assemble a few interesting tidbits for you. So I assume everybody tried or maybe not tried the Amy West setup as, as we sent out on an email a couple weeks ago. And I assume well, some people tried it, some didn't. It basically compiled Hello World, got it working. Are we okay there? Yeah, everybody? Okay, no complaints. <laughs> So I'll skip the setup then. Go straight to coding basics. Okay, so I kind of took the feedback from the responses that the people filled in for the survey and uh, tried tried to tune it in for for the bits that. Uh, Tried to tune it for everybody so everybody could have a little bit of uh, information out of this whole uh, seminar. So I'm going to jump into advanced stuff and I'm going to assume you know C and I'm going to just forward, move forward uh, as quickly as possible. So if we lose you along the way, please, please uh, put up your hand or something so we can <laughs> maybe delve deeper into that subject. And wave goodbye. Yeah, maybe <laughs> wave goodbye. <laughs> I, I put it, I put together this part, which was the compiler and linker, because if you're going to program on any system, you know, you need to know what compiler and linker you, you're using. And so I put a little blurb here together, uh, explaining that the primary tool set we use is called GNU GCC. GCC, I believe, today stands for GNU Compiler Collection. It's changed names over the years, but. It is our officially supported compiler. There's also another compiler called BBCC available, which is just for C. Uh, it produces uh, more compact code, but it's uh, kind of a, a side project. So depending on how how comfortable how comfortable you are with switching compilers, you may or may not want to go down that road. The advanced people who want to get every ounce out of the machine probably want to try to use BBCC. Your mileage may vary. Of course, GCC supports multiple languages, C, C++, Objective C, Pascal, Fortran, all sorts of things. We just use C and C++ on Amiga for now. One important thing I want to mention about the compiler is it's got Amiga-specific extensions built into the compiler. So you need to use the compiler that comes with the SDK. You can't just grab GCC from the GCC website, compile it, and expect it to produce binaries. It will not work. You have to use the one from the Amiga Development Tools website. I have a link there. You have to use that one. There's probably too much documentation on GCC out there. There's a lot of it. Pretty much every platform in the universe uses GCC at some point. 
<laughs> so there's going to be a bit of conflicting information sometimes. Sometimes it's out of date, sometimes it's too new. So when you run into trouble, you basically have to ask for help or you're going to be reading a lot. So uh, depending how much reading you like to do, <laughs> you might want to go, help, right? My GCC compiler isn't working, it's giving me strange errors, that kind of thing. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how much experience everybody's had with all the compilers yet. I'll assume you know it. So the compiler is pretty much the simple part. The more difficult part tends to be the standard C library. We have a port of newlib, it's called, newlib. It comes from Red Hat, I believe. Um, it's kind of targeted towards embedded systems. So it's, it's got lots of optimizations in it. That's our standard C library. And there's a link to the standard website. And that's got the documentation for the library. You need to know what the limits of your C library are. That's what I'm trying to get, get through here. You can't just take any piece of code compile it and expect all the functions to be there. That's just not the way it works. Uh, I, I get a lot of complaints from people saying, well, it doesn't have function X. Your C library is broken. Well, no, it's actually complete. Uh, what's broken is your understanding of how these things work. <laughs> There's a lot of libraries out there. There's a lot of C libraries with a lot of extensions. And uh, understanding which extension goes with which library, which which platform, it takes a lot of time and investment. There's no shortcut for it. Newlib has a lot of Unix extensions in it as well. Uh, POSIX extensions is another thing for the standard. So it's really a challenge to figure out the function you're calling, what, what it's actually coming from, where is it coming from. A lot of people just call it and hope it just works. But uh, it's also important to know where the function, what standard defines the function and what it really does. It's, it's important. Um, shortcutting that process uh, doesn't really help you much. So just a little warning. You can't just assume everything will work. <laughs> Another popular C library that's included with the Amiga SDK is called CLib2. And uh, it's a link, it's a statically linked library, so it's not shared, so your executables will be larger, of course. It's, I found it particularly well suited for porting software because it has a lot of facilities in it from the Unix world, the POSIX world. So you can get a lot of stuff done quickly. A lot of functions are there that aren't in Newland. They just don't exist in Newland. So if, for example, say you have some wild Unix utility, you want, oh, I wish I had that on my Amiga. Well, I would start with CLIB2 generally. I would start with that and see how far I can get, how many functions are missing, how much stuff works, doesn't work. Once I have that compiling, then I'd, I'd switch it to NewLib because NewLib is the standard shared library. But I'd always start with CLIB2. That's just the way I like to, to start things out. So if you're into porting, CLIB2 is kind of the, the better starting point. If you're just doing Amiga-specific coding, stick with NewLib and just don't worry about it. <laughs> I have here a little bit of information about the different C libraries, and there's a special switch, dash MCRT, that you can use to switch between them. <coughs> See, there's NewLib, CLib2, non-thread-safe, and CLib2-TS, thread-safe version. So if you're doing threading, you kind of need to use NewLib, which is always thread-safe, or clib 2 dash TS. And that, that's my segue into threading, right? <laughs> uh, I, I'm kind of assuming everybody knows what threading is. Is everybody familiar with the concept? Of threading? No, maybe, sort of. Threading basically, you know how you have main? Main, right? Well, if you're doing threading, you do main and then you do spawn or create new process or branch or there's various names for this function that would call another function over yonder which would run in parallel. Now you got two threads. 
If you just have main, you have one thread. If you have main, you call this function spawn or create new process. You got two threads. You call it again, you got three threads. Right? These are all threads of control. They call it sometimes in programming lingo. Basically, it's it's code that's running in parallel, and your main is in, is the parent is controlling all the child processes. So it's important to. Uh, to know that concept. <laughs> there's, there's plenty of information on uh, threading on Wiki, on Wikipedia. So I kind of pointed at the POSIX threading API, which we like to use. Um, there's many threading APIs, unfortunately. Uh, I have a little blurb here. No, I kind of skipped that in here. But I should mention that um, C has never been a multi-threading language which kind of shocks people. <laughs> so what do you mean it doesn't do threading? C never did threading. Every vendor added threading to C in their own specific way. And so now, you know, in our year, C, what was it, version C 2012 that was just released added threading just now. So it's now officially part of the standard. It's the first time. And you're like, what? Right? <laughs> Apache runs with threading, it's fine. Right? <laughs> Windows has threading. Well, then, no, they did. They didn't. never had it in the language. So they each guy did it their own way. So if you're trying to port stuff, it, it's, it can become help. Because they made assumptions that don't apply on Amiga, or Amiga made assumptions that don't apply on Windows, for example. Or Mac made assumptions that don't apply on Linux. Or it's really a, quite a challenge. I've, uh, I've worked in threading a lot of years, and uh, I've never had it just work between platforms. Never. I can't just take something from Linux, compile it on, say, HPUX. It doesn't work. No. <laughs> so it's not just an Amiga problem. It's industry problem. And that's why they added to the standard just recently. Uh, C++, same problem. No threading. Just was added uh, last year. So hopefully, in the next five to 10 years, maybe longer, uh, all the programmers in the world will start using the proper threading API and we don't have to have this, this discussion, it'll just work. <laughs> in the meantime, you want to get work done. So we have the POSIX threading API, which is available on Amiga OS, and we have the Amiga threading, in quotes, API, because Amiga processes are lightweight. So they're basically already threads. But we call them processes. So uh, hopefully the terminology is not already getting you. <laughs> P threads it works, works quite well, but it's still a subset of the full standard. So you still run into functions that are missing, so to speak. They're just not implemented. Uh, static link interface. Yeah, so you can you can link to it dynamically or statically, as you'd expect. Um, Just one question: If you're yes? placing a specific for the meter, do you want to use the meter specific for the threading implementation, or if you want to make your program just for Amiga, yeah. then you just yeah. use create new process or create new bar, <laughs> and that launches another process. You run your program in there. Yeah. It, but then it will only run on Amiga, right? There's no porting. When it comes time to port, you're going to have to learn whatever the function call is in, say, Windows, which I can't remember off the top of my head. When? When? Oh, well, yeah, of course you want to make money, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes? If you want a future proof, if you want a future proof, you can go. So that when we eventually start using hardware that's um, SMT aware, where do we want to get? Do we want to use B-threads? Um, it won't matter. Uh, for multi-processing, multi-core, it... Hello? Repeat oh, repeat the question. Right. Okay. It says, uh, what, what happens when uh, things move to SMP, that kind of stuff? Well, the threading won't matter. It'll be invisible to you. That's the goal. That's the bottom line. Yeah. So it'll just be a recompiler? And yeah. Okay. Now, if that... I know we're still uh, hammering up the exact details of the API. There may be another tag added somewhere, right? But then we try to make it as invisible as possible. So if you're still using POSIX threads, it'll just work. 
Okay. Even though you're running multi-core. Okay. Right? It'll just work. We'll hide it. Okay. If you're using Amiga specific, you might have to add a tag. That's fine. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I assume the tags would be for purposes of getting your compiler hits. Yes. Okay. Yes. The tags are to give it hints okay. or to say, hey, this is multi-core aware. Please let it go run free. Right? Gotcha. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good question, though. Oh, I did. I did write up a blurb about threading C, C++. So you can, uh, yeah, the, the way to find out whether your compiler is really threading aware or not, is just go G++ minus V. You get this little thread model single. That's bad. That means no multi-thread. <laughs> so if you look on Amiga today and you do G++ dash V, it says single. That means it does not support multi-thread. It is not safe to, to branch out unless you really know what you're doing. You gotta know what you're doing. <laughs> and I can explain how to do that for people who want to, um, want to go down that road, if you wanna do threading in C++ later on. Maybe as an aside, I can show you how to do that. But I don't wanna bog everybody down right now. Brief <laughs> description of what the pros and cons are of, of <coughs> using the, the you said we, we shouldn't be going into multiple threads in, in C++. C++. Plus. Yes. <coughs> Can you give us just a, a brief description of what the pros and cons of using thread, why we would want to use multiple threads in C++? Why you would want to use multiple threads? Well, uh, you want to run things concurrently. Okay. Uh, like, yeah, you know, say, the, the usual example is a web, web server. Right? If you have one thread, you can service one person. Now you can run it, you can, you can get fancy, right? And you can say, okay, now two people are allowed to connect, and you're kind of time slicing between them. And you're still one thread, right? One user. Now if you have a thousand, that's never going to scale, right? <laughs> it scales to a point. It scales to a point. Okay. Then, then suddenly you need multiple threads. And then if you have multiple threads, why don't you have multiple cores? Right? <laughs> Put a thread on each core. Now you're really running parallel on hardware. You're not just uh, multitasking anymore. You're multi, right. multi core. All right. yeah. uh, so generally, you don't really care about uh, threading until you want to run something in the background. Um, another example would be the old word processor, and you hit the print button. You don't want to wait for the print to finish before right. working on. Right? Right. So how do you make that work in your code? Um, you can you can still do single thread and have it run running in the background. It's possible to code it that way. I've done it. It's not that much fun. It's possible. Um, or you can just launch another process. Let the OS take care of all the detail. Which is how yeah. has been working. Yeah. yeah. How does the program share data between the threads then? Oh, we'll, we'll get to that later. How it okay. shares data. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Does the OS support any kind of uh, collaborative multi-threading, you know, something maybe simple? Code variables and that such? Yes, yeah. uh, it's, it's in the pthreads API. Okay. Yeah, it's always pthreads. Yeah, yeah. if always you use pthreads, there, there's some facilities for doing the uh, code variables. There's these different techniques to share data, <laughs> as Paul kind of was asking about. Uh, they're not all there, but there's a lot of them. Okay. If you're used to the POSIX API, then most of them are there. So, feel right at home. Yeah, POSIX yeah. Is, uh, is mostly the standard. Uh, yeah, POSIX is, is mostly the standard for threading in the computing world. Mm -hmm. Mostly. Most, yeah. Of course, Windows doesn't use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then they do the same thing we do. They yeah. stick an API on top of their API. So, you get these layers, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's fun computing, eh? <laughs> I'm so glad they added it to the standard, because someday I'm like, I don't want to worry about this. <laughs> it's just worked. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna delve into C++ too much, because that, that really can, uh, that'll take a few days. So let's not go there right now. <laughs> well, the program's starting up. Well, let's check our time first. 15 minutes, hmm. I think we could get a little bit into startup. Hey, Paul. This okay. is Paul's module, but I thought 
Well, I can I can do some, or you could do some. Your call. You want me to, or you want to? Well, let's see if there's any more questions first on the on the introduction, because I kind of glanced. I really went fast over some basic stuff. I wanted everybody who's advanced to know threading exists, and everyone who isn't advanced knows to be very careful. <laughs> uh, the C library again, be careful if you're advanced and you're switching libraries, and the compiler, of course, uh, has to be mega specific. So, okay. so, so what are some First. good uh, resources for finding out information about these things beyond coming here? That's the resource today. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. <laughs> the wiki. Yep, the wiki. The wiki. I need to expand this into something more uh, more thorough, and that that's what I'm doing slowly. I just wanted to get it on the wiki for now. It used to be on my personal website, and that was the only place I found any documentation on this. My. Well, the, um, there are websites too. I mean, if you look at the. A lot of the popular news sites also have forums on programming. There's always for coding.net. There are other places too where you can look for tutorials, examples. And oh yeah, there's other places for information. Yeah, I was gonna. That's at the actually the end of everything. But yeah, there's other places you can get information. But this, the specifics on like uh, the problems with threading on Amiga OS, I, I couldn't find any documentation anywhere. They're in programmers' heads. Yeah, I remember this fellow Gunther Nickel. He had a lot of good information in his head. He's he's kind of moved on, but uh, he used to work on the compiler and such. Yeah. So this stuff is around, but it's not put down on paper, so to speak. And so that's, that's why I wanted the week to start, so we could start putting this down for people before it's gone, before it just vanishes. Yeah, because yeah. people have to come into the platform, relearn it again. Relearn it again. Just waste time. <laughs> uh, next question and, there. Uh, for, for the new library, it seems like it's transparent in terms of it being open and, I mean, open and closed and whether, you know, whether you're heard like, hello world, right? And mm -hmm. it's, how's it? I mean, oh, and there's, there's some magic. Yes, the question is, well, this, the C library, you didn't have to open it, right? It just yeah. sort of happened. Yeah. You're like, what? <laughs> Well, well, I don't think I, do we have a bit on the C startup code in here, or, or did I not? I, mean, I, just look for I don't think so. I mean, that's some code that's added by the GCC compiler? I didn't document that. Oh, it's not you. L auto? No, 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 not that. Uh, <laughs> so you start asking, okay, say you call a printf, printf, lowercase, right? How did it link that in, right? <laughs> That's basically the question. Well, GCC, of course, has default parameters, which are hidden from you unless you use it, the right switch to show you everything. So GCC hides a lot from programmers until you really want to know. Um, I believe the, the command is dash VB or something. You start adding Vs, and it starts getting more and more verbose. Pretty soon, it's spitting out so much stuff, you don't know what to do with it. It'll tell you everything it's doing, but it hides a, it hides that right now. And as far as newlib goes, it actually opens the newlib library for you, and it just gives you pointers all hidden. You don't care. You just call the function, and it just sort of works, right? You didn't have to do anything. Though. So this is hidden in the C startup code, and the C startup code is Amiga specific. It's platform specific. Every platform has its own startup code usually called CRT begin and CRT end. So they stick this stuff at the front of your main and the stuff at the back of your main. So it goes, so the computer will go, okay, I'm gonna run your executable. It goes CRT begin, does all its magic, calls your main, you return from main, it goes CRT end, clean up, clean up, clean up, exit. So the cleanup would be closing the library. Yeah, yeah, like in, um, <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly true, but in Unix, if you call exit, it'll actually call your end for you to clean up a little bit before it gives it to the OS, which cleans up too. But <laughs> if, if you use the live auto switch when you're compiling, which yeah. is the default setup with CodeBench, for example, that's what is being called in that CR startup where it opens up all the libraries, that, mm -hmm. the general libraries that you need, or what? Mm -hmm. <sighs> 
fall. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the question was about this lib auto. Does everybody know what lib auto? No? Yes, no, maybe? Lib auto is kind of a cheat. You know, it's a nice cheat, but it's a cheat. Um, lib auto is Amiga specific, and it will automatically open libraries for you if you just call the function. So it's kind of hidden, right? So if I go, um, I don't know, I application, some function call, it will automatically open that for you. Lib auto will. So all you do is call main and just call the function. It just works. Everybody's happy. Uh, <laughs> do you use it? No, I do not. <laughs> because it's making assumptions. And so that's the, that's the thing, it's making assumptions. It's, it's assuming it's the version you want of the library, it's assuming the version of the interface you want as well. And it's assuming the name of the interface you want. So these are all assumed, right? And I don't, I'm being a careful kind of programmer, I don't like assumptions, because they waste time, I find, when things go wrong. <laughs> Burn many hours looking for an error that isn't yours, you know. Uh, but it's highly convenient because I could do a hello world in a few lines, right? On a GUI with this lib auto, it just woo, works. But lib auto is uh, actually using a facility that is specific to GCC. Even GCC has a special special facility called constructors and destructors that only works on GCC again. <laughs> and uh, constructors will run, where do they run? I think they run even before CRT begin? Or they run just after CRT begin? These, these special functions you can sit insert in there. Anyway, correct me if I can't remember where the constructor is actually called in the uh, sequence of startup. But this is a special trick and you can make these constructors do little magic things before your program even runs. And you can use the destructor to undo what you did, of course. Um, generally, you should not be using those unless you're really into advanced kind of stuff. Well, not to right. use live auto, the L auto? Or no, auto, auto is okay to use for small programs. I wouldn't use it for a large application. So you're kind of asking for a little bit of trouble. Especially when the OS upgrades. Now, which version of the library did you just get? <laughs> you got something. Now, your, your customers are saying it doesn't work, doesn't work. It's like, oh, well, I use Libato, right? <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> so I like to put the explicit, explicit version numbers in there, and I know what it's doing. Yeah. I think for most of us here today, we don't care as long as it works. Yeah, for the... Just as it works, use lib auto. That's fine for now. <laughs> so that's a special little thing that I, I didn't get into, kind of on purpose. I've been avoiding it, but you sucked me in anyway. <laughs> I, I wanted to try to keep it simple, but I, the, the, the audience can drive, right? <laughs> questions? More? More questions? There, there was a question, but yes. It's kind of a longer answer. But at some point, can we touch on? when it makes more sense to spawn a new thread and when it makes sense to create another process um, independent of your own code. So let's say I'm doing sort of a very long matrix permutation. I've got something that's here, I'm waiting for I.O. in a Anything like that is going to go off and eventually send a signal back to your original thread or your, 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 your parent process saying, I'm done. When do you choose to create a new process? When do you choose to spawn a thread? Hmm. Interesting question. Uh, it's like basically, when when do you choose to create a new process? Yeah, process model EOS is something that I'm not really at. And when do you choose to create a new thread? Yeah. Now, a uh, a process and a thread in Amiga are the identical. They're the same. We yes. underline. Yes. The implementation is the same. The implementation is identical. But I assume in the future that's not necessarily the case. Um, there, we've been toying with actually making thread threads, okay. but they don't make any sense until there's memory protection. Right. So, yes. yes. <laughs> so that's why there's no threading API yet, because there's no need. Okay. And then, but see, it also becomes complicated because you're going to handle error exceptions are different. Yes. Presumably. I mean, I, I, 
if your exceptions and such become different, yes. Yeah, so, so, so if you're using POSIX API, you're safe here. because it'll be automatic. Okay. But if you're using Amiga specific function calls, there might be a create new thread function added. Okay. And then of course your code needs to go call that, right? right. And that's, that's where I was kind of uh, hinting there might be a new tag, right? So maybe it's create new pro process, I'm a thread versus I'm a process. And there's, right now there's no difference between thread and process in Amiga OS. But there, there is likely going to be. Yeah, there will be. One will have its own independent memory. Yeah. Address space in one world. Because one of the goals of Amiga OS is isolated address spaces, of course. Um, once you go down that road, a process and a thread are two different things. Because you can have multiple threads in a process, but you can't have a thread call a thread over here in another process. Doesn't work. So. Outside of the Amiga, right? Yeah. Right. Well, in the Amiga, Amiga, you can't because it's all one space. Yeah, in the Amiga, it's all one shared memory space, one shared address space, so it's all just one big happy family. Okay. <laughs> That's why you can have a thread over here and take down a whole machine. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But can you also have a thread over here or read your credit card number over there? Yes. Yeah, you can have a thread over here, read credit card here, send it to virus there. Yeah. Everybody's happy. <laughs> well, you Amiga, got what you wanted, and, and you're the hacker got what they wanted to, so everybody's yeah. happy. Everybody. <laughs> you don't know what's happening, hacker's happy. Yeah. It's all shared memory, right? <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? I'm watching my clock here. Five minutes. Probably shouldn't get into startup. More question. Good. <laughs> uh, when you're looking around for various functions, things that you're allowed to do in the API or in any of the libraries, is there a better way to do it than digging around in the .h files? Right. Is there, is there a better way to figure out what function to call to do something than to look at .h headers? And, and Autodocs as well, I assume? You know, you know about Autodocs? Yeah. Okay, so Autodocs is usually your first stop. Header file is kind of second stop. And then usually panic after that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's why the wiki was started. <laughs> the wiki was, is actually a, a direct ripoff of the wrong kernel reference manuals, which you may or may not know about the wrong kernel reference manuals, those big, thick books. They told you what functions to call in what order, for what purpose, right? They gave you that. We don't really have a great way to do that for every piece of the OS yet, but it's coming along. It's coming along finally, because we got it on a wiki and people are actually contributing. Um, the only other way to find out, besides you know endless documentation, is to ask questions in forums, web forums. That's, that's one of the most uh, quickest ways to get answers now. And um, for Amigo OS programming, OS4coding.net is currently the, the hottest place to be, I found out. Yeah. Uh, other platforms, I'm not sure where their websites are, but uh, everybody's got their own, right? Everybody's got their own developer websites. You go there, there's, you can ask a question, somebody will answer, usually. <laughs> Sometimes you get air, right? But that happens on any platform. <laughs> I think there's another resource as well, and that's yeah. uh, OS4 Deco and Aminet have a lot of example code. Right. So oh, as far as examples go, yeah, Aminet and OS4 Deco. Intuition? Uh, Intuition, -based. Intuition based, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that has a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Utility base has disappeared. Yeah. Utility base is gone. There's also, on the Hyperion forum, there's the uh, Developers area and the SDK area. Oh yeah, there's got people in there. It seems there's a little bit of support in the in the Hyperion forum, but it's not that's not very hot. Like, you don't get a lot of answers there, because <laughs> most most of us, like me, will just ignore the questions because we're busy, <laughs> which is bad. But that's what happens. Right? There are also some examples in the SDK, and there's some examples in the SDK. Um, you always want to rip something off if you can, right? Find some code, rip it off. That's the best way to learn and move quickly. <laughs> yeah, and you don't want to write from scratch using the RKRM. You'll hurt yourself. <laughs> or use just the wiki. Well, we've been trying to put more examples up on the wiki, of course. So 
So it's uh, it's coming together, but it's, it's still not nice and gelled the way I want it. It's still a little scattered. You know, well, but, uh, on a side note, I mean, it's one of the reasons for this event. So that more people get exposed to programming on this floor, uh, but hopefully the video, and people watching this uh, at a later date, can have an opportunity to contribute to these things. Because one of the yeah. greatest things about the wiki is it is an open forum for people to make contributions. Oh, um, yes, yes. Buddy up to Steve. That's a good advertisement there. Yeah. But in the future, <laughs> if you write an application and you and you want to share that code, there's a number of outlets to do it. And, yeah. and those websites we're talking about, the wiki, putting uh, examples on. And yeah. The more so if you that, want to contribute, which I hope you do, yeah, you can contribute on the wiki, one of the forums, support forum. Um, the wiki is closed, but I'm the one who grants access, so just ask me. Right? You could write for it. There's a lot of uh, vandals around, so that's why we have to keep it closed, because they get in there and they vandalize it, or, or these robots will get in there and just spam your wiki full of garbage, right? So we're just trying to avoid that. <laughs> so it's a pain in the butt to clean up. <laughs> so if you're wondering why it's closed access, it's not like we're uber gods and we won't let you in, right? <laughs> No, please come contribute. Right? <laughs> but, uh, thank you for that note. Questions more? We're, we're going to get into we're going to dive right into startup after lunch. I think because one o'clock is lunch and it's one o'clock. So. <laughs>